actions trailing the alleged reprisal attack by some officers of the Nigerian army on civilians in Imo state, an allegation which the army has fully denied. Gunmen on Monday afternoon were said to have killed a military officer when they attacked some soldiers in Awo Omama in Oru East local government area of Imo state. It is reported that in a reprisal attack, military men allegedly burnt a hotel, cars, houses and shops. The Nigerian army, however, said that they only went to the scene to disperse members of the indigenous people of Biafra and the Eastern Security Network who were forcing people to comply with Monday's sit-at-home order. Well, let's take a look at this video before we come back for a reaction from a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Kingsley Mogalu. I made a mistake, she will go for nine. I hope. Hope I'm a mistake, will go for nine. Look at what I do in our junction. Everywhere is a blaze. Hope by lazy email. Hope by lazy email. Look at people's house on fire. No matter what hope, I'm a lake. Imagine. 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 Nandera, I'm here. I bet you do. Blood sweat everywhere, blaze. So, what did happen? So what did happen? Nigeria Army. Nigeria Army, what I know, man. Watch, yeah, yeah. We can go for a guy, man, no, Bodo. Hey, look, that guy, man, no, Bodo. Well, in response to this video, King Simogali wrote, the wanton destruction of civilian property in Awomama in Imo State by soldiers of the Nigerian Army in response to the killing of a soldier by some individuals is unfortunate. That soldier did not deserve to die. And his killing was also wrong. But there is something called proportionality in responding to this sort of incident. Now, that security threats appear to have reduced in the southeast after the Anambra governorship election. What is the justification for the continued militarization of the region with multiple checkpoints and soldiers reportedly collecting money from innocent transporters and commuters? The unnecessary militarization of civilian spaces creates a siege mentally. This is unhealthy for nation building and national cohesion. Dr. Bati, I'm coming straight to you on this story. What is your reaction? Okay, well, first, uh, this story has been in circulation since, since about Monday. Uh, Monday. Yes. I think it took the uh, Nigerian army a little bit too late yes. uh, to respond because the story that was out there was that, look, a soldier was killed at Abu Mama and uh, Junction, and that soldiers went back there in a retaliatory attack, and they burned down shops and uh, destroyed vehicles and all of that uh, in a show of, uh, uh, you know, um, brigandage, yes. if, if you like. But then, you know, the uh, military has now issued a statement through the 82 div uh, to say that it was not, in fact, uh, soldiers engaged in any reprisal attack, that what actually happened was that Soldiers went to keep the peace at that junction when, according to the military, uh, certain elements of IPOP and the Eastern Security Network uh, decided to go after people who did not observe the sit at home order on Monday. Now, that in itself is curious because you recall that IPOP, exactly. uh, had, uh, you know, speaking through uh, uh, Emma Powerful, had said that, look, IPOP had uh, suspended. The sit at home order. However, people still observe it. But, you know, we're now being told by the military that this week, on Monday, uh, that in this particular location, certain persons defied that, uh, or rather, you know, acting on the uh, earlier information uh, that there would not be any sit at home order went out. And that this was a case of IPOB and ESN uh, men trying to enforce that particular order. Well, we have two sides of the story now out there in the public domain. I think what is important is for the military headquarters and even the state government collaborating with the military headquarters to order an investigation for us to find out what exactly happened. Nobody has any right to kill anybody. So if it was true that a soldier was killed, that in itself is wrong. Very wrong. Because that's a clear act of assassination, of murder, of people taking the law into their hands. Now, if again it is true uh, that anybody's uh, shops, we were told about 20 shops, yes. 17 vehicles destroyed, Terrible. wanton destruction Terrible. on a Monday uh, in, uh, in uh, a was... part of Nigeria, that in itself, you know, is not acceptable. And the question you will ask is that 
if indeed it was the uh, uh, military uh, trying to keep the peace, where was the police? Now, people have been asking the question about the militarization of the East, yes. which was the point that came out of the, uh, those tweets. Yes. Mm. Uh, he's in the by UK, by the way, so he's free to tweet from the UK. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, those tweets by him, he was complaining about the militarization of the space in the, the southeast. No part of Nigeria should be militarized. I mean, the Constitution, Section 217, uh, 2C thereof, says that the military can be called out in aid of uh, civilian authority uh, when the occasion arises. But even in, within the contemplation of that Section 217, it was for a brief purpose, and it was for in a situation of complete breakdown of law and order. The military is not trained to do police work. We have to keep making that point. You know, but you, we've been using the police to do police work uh, in different parts of the country. The military insists that in the East, what they are doing is what is called uh, 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 Operation Golden Dawn. That's what it's now, called. Now, look, it should be very brief and, you know, we should empower the police to be able to keep the peace in any part of the country. But an investigation is important yes. to reassure the people because we really cannot continue like this. We managed to hold uh, elections in uh, Anambra, and then in other parts of the uh, eastern okay. part of the country, you are still having these issues, and you know you blame this side, you blame that side. That is not even good for commerce, yes. which is a major, you know, en uh, source of engagement in the eastern part of the country. Yes, and of course, overall. This is not good for the image of Nigeria. Absolutely. We keep hearing these denials, Tundra Biola. I believe that video that was showed earlier happened about two weeks ago where, you know, some alleged soldiers were shooting, um, you know, at some houses in Imo State, same Imo State. And all the Nigerian army has done is to bring out these reports, these statements, these denials. But there's not been a, you know, complete investigation made at this point. So this is the thing with the gaslighting. Yeah. You're constantly being asked to distrust the evidence of your own eyes. You're watching a video and yes. you're being told, oh, that didn't happen. And I remember there are times where um, the public is ordered or encouraged to stay at home, but that doesn't apply to people like us who are providing essential services and we have to be out on the road, like, I don't know, election day or like NSARS, and you see the number of police and soldiers on the road, it makes you anxious for that one day. Yes. Imagine that being your reality day in, day out, wherever you leave your house, with the relationship that the public seems to have with our law enforcement and our security agencies. So this story that you've shared now shows both sides of it. Under no circumstances must any person in uniform who is serving this country and protecting us be killed. But on the other hand, there's that report that um, the tweet by um, King Zimahadu that you read about soldiers extorting innocent passengers. So both sides of it are reflected here. The fact that um, our security agencies, the military, have uh, treat us in such a heavy-handed fashion, and also the dangers, the risk that they bear trying to do their jobs. But what, what I will say is that this denial that it wasn't us, it was them. It's quite typical. Yes. It was IPOP so members running see. amok. We hear that constantly. But this issue of what are they still doing there, why do they linger on in the southeast, was not addressed. And it really ought to be. It, it to does be. make me anxious, even on these like, very rare occasions. So how is that your daily reality or your daily commute to work? Mm -hmm. It really is a problem. And I do have to say that arson is completely out of the question. This reprisal attacks have to stop. If at all it was not the military, fine. But the fact is that the military have done this in the past in this country. The Zaki um, BM um, massacre, OD, even the Shiites massacre was all about the killing of police officers, a soldier, or obstructing the movement of the chief of um, army staff from A to B, and people died as a result. So, so there's a history yes. to this. So when so, you hear reprisal attacks happened, well... All right. Rufai, your comment on this story. So for me, I think it's very sad what is happening because currently we are talking, and I mean we as a country are talking. Uh, Dr. Ezefe and some Igbo leaders met the president as regards what's happening in the East, and we are talking. And this is not a good side to behold. At the same time, I condemn in strong terms the killing of any soldier in yes. this country. May it shouldn't be done. In peace. Amen. But the military too should watch it. I'll die back historically. Was there a need for the Asaba massacre in the first place? Then Tundu has talked about OD. Then the list goes on. We can't continue to hear this. Oh, 
One soldier was killed, and then a whole village is raised. There was no need for the Asaba massacre. And we should watch it. We should watch it, and somebody should talk. You know, the top echelon of military should talk to the ground officers about this. They have every right to be angry for not burning the city down or not burning the town down and destruction of lives and property because you have an occurrence like this. Thirdly, the other point I'd like to make is it's not a good place to be in a being an occupation. I've been there before. Early 2000s in Wari, this was the case, military everywhere. Mm. After the 97, 98 fight between the Shakiri and Ijo, you don't want to be there waking up in the morning and trying to drive out and you see checkpoints everywhere. It's not a great place it's scary. to be. Scary. And that lingered scary. till about 06, 07, 010 before it peters out. So I don't know when this is going to stop. But trust me, once they set up, it is there for a while. Right. So what should we do? We should do everything possible. Everything possible to keep the peace. All right. And please. I must repeat, we are talking. Let us respect the terms of those conversations. And whoever is trying to enforce this sit at home that is leading to the light, destruction of life and property, please, they should stop it. Any fifth columnist in the back should stop it. We need peace to return to the eastern heartland of this Absolutely. country. Absolutely. Well said, Rafael.